Alrighty, hi everyone. Uh, I'm just coming on here. I'm just here at uh, Awakenings Bookstore where I am setting up for my Sunday night Spirit Circle class uh, that I do here every week. It's the first class I started, first circle I started here. I believe that's almost four years now, probably four years now actually. Uh, and I am here um, just getting ready because uh, we're going to be connecting with Spirit. We're going to be doing mental mediumship this evening. and uh, But I wanted to pop on here because I normally am supposed to be on here at 1 o'clock on Sundays. But as many of you probably know, I'm really terrible at consistency and at uh, making sure that I do these because social media is not my easiest uh, tool. But in any case, here I am <clears throat> doing this. And I just wanted to let you know about uh, a few things that are happening. So... Number one, um, I'm going to be doing a mediumship demonstration with AJ Barrera. Uh, I'm a well-known medium over here in Orange County, and I know he travels all over. Uh, and that will be August 30th, um, and that will be from 7 to 9 at In Spirit in Mission Viejo. There's a link on Eventbrite that, you, that I'll be posting, so you'll be able to uh, get a link there and get tickets. So if you haven't seen me demonstrate, you'll get to see me and a really great medium, AJ Barrera, working together to bring forward messages from the spirits. So I'm very excited about that. Um, that is... I'll put more information up there for you. So the other thing I wanted to mention too was I'm going to be doing a free online class uh, in do, 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 on Saturday, Saturday, August 3rd. So free, we're talking free. It's going to be free. You just get to get on Zoom, get to work with me, uh, and I'm going to help you to uh, we'll sit in the power. We'll do an uh, intuitive exercise, uh, mediumship. So if you have never done that before, you're welcome to give it a try. Um, it's open to all levels. Um, so it'll be sort of a mediumship, psychic you sort of thing. Just depends on the level and the experience that's there. So uh, that's going to be uh, Saturday, August 3rd. It'll be 11 a.m. Uh, to 12.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. So I believe that works out nicely for people in other parts of the world. So if you're in the UK, uh, I believe that works out nicely for you. So it's the evening. If you're on the East Coast, it's just a little bit later in the afternoon. So I've tried to pick a time that's going to be as flexible as possible with everyone. Um, but I really hope many of you will be able to join and express like, and, and check that out because I know that there's a lot of people who have wanted to practice their mediumship or work with me and just the time that I have my online class hasn't been able to work. So uh, I really want to encourage you to check that out because uh, it's a great class. And I have to tell you, I was very skeptical about working with the online sort of uh, platform for mediumship. And I'm actually quite amazed and it actually has become one of my favorite ways to teach mediumship. Um, I tend to get really awesome people together uh, and I'm very lucky in that regard. And we, you get to work together. You get to connect with spirit. And I just find that it's very supportive, very positive. So I'm very excited to be putting that out there. Uh, lastly, I would like to mention uh, I'm interested in do doing, if you are Southern California based, uh, I'm interested in doing a platform weekend workshop. I just need to know what weekend sounds good to you, uh, either in August uh, or September. So let me know what sounds good to you, because for those of you who like to do platform or who'd like to get better at doing platform, build that confidence, I really want to help uh, you to do that. So a few different things coming up here that I'm excited to be doing. Um, and yeah, so any questions, comments, concerns, feelings about either any of these things that I've mentioned, the demonstration with AJ Barrera, uh, the free, 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 online class, um, as well as a platform. So any, any questions that you might have, I'm happy to answer that. So Tony's asking, do you think you'd ever do an astrology class? Yes, I actually do teach astrology. Um, so I can let you know whenever I'm going to be teaching that again. I do a beginning astrology uh, class that focuses more on the traditional form of astrology. And I love that class. I've taught it several times. Uh, it's usually uh, like a series, so it tends to be a few weeks. Um, 
it's usually about five to six weeks. It's a lot of information um, to get in, and, and I'm going to see how I can best do that on an online platform as well. So just to answer that, I want to make sure you know that that is possible and probably will happen. Um, I love teaching astrology. It's one of my favorite things. So that's really exciting. <clears throat> so other thoughts, other questions about anything with mediumship, learning, anything at all, I'm happy to answer. As I am here just before class tonight, I'm not sure what we're doing. Generally, the spirit will kind of informs me based on whatever is the need in, in, in the classes. So I tend to let spirit be really the thing that is leading the class uh, as much as possible through their sort of influencing me throughout. Um, so that's very fun. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I already do teach an online uh, class in uh, mediumship. That's on Thursdays 7 to 8.30 and that's through Zoom. You can message me if you want more details about that uh, and I think it's 20 bucks. Well, I don't think. I know that it's 20 bucks. So, <laughs> um, Okay, let's see. I got another question because Tony's thrown out all the questions today. Uh, yeah, good job. Tony Tony asks a great question when it comes to mediumship. She asks, um, <clears throat> how do you best separate spirits when they come in like two grandmas? That is such a fantastic question. So one of the key things that you really want to do when you're connecting with the spirit is really keep your focus on the other world uh, when you're starting to tune in. Um, so you really want to really feel that presence of, of the spirit with you and really feel that closeness with them. As you start to feel them, you're going to be getting, uh, you know, the impressions of who they are, what they are, et cetera, et cetera. And as you give this information, hopefully it will land and you will know, okay, this is definitely this person or that person. Um, what can sometimes happen is that, you know, perhaps the information fits for too many people. So if I said I have a little tiny grandma here with uh, curly gray hair who loves to cook and garden and uh, really likes, loves her grandchildren, that could be a whole lot of different people. So when you find yourself really beginning to give information, you want to really feel that close connection and do give whatever you can that's going as much information as you can, uh, maybe about five pieces of information or something that hopefully they'll be able to give you something more specific that you'll be able to determine. Now, if you have given some information, two people can still take it. What I would offer then is to offer to the spirit world, just offer back to them, um, can you can you give me something that's going to help to define which person this goes to? Um, so that's a big thing. And so the spirit will then be able to give you some piece of information that's going to be able to make you determine which person this belongs to. Um, the other thing I would say, too, is... Um, lost my train of thought for one second. Hold on, it'll come back. Two, parent, two grandparents. Yep, yep. Okay, and so the other thing you can do is you kind of sort of have to decide as you keep working. So let's say you keep giving this information and these two people very much have a very similar life. Uh, and as you're having a hard time to, to work with it, another thing you can do is just, okay, maybe you do have two people here. So one thing that you can offer to the other world is, okay, I'm going to work with just this one first and I'll come back to you know the the, uh, the other person. By doing that, you're sort of letting these two know, okay, you're gonna both get your time. Let's just work with this in two different ways. So that way it sort of details itself to this one person first and then goes to the, then you, when you're done with that, you can go to the next person. Whenever I've had that sort of situation happen, which doesn't happen very often, but when I have had it all happen, um, I have found that that actually is a really effective tool of being able to differentiate because then they're both not coming in at the same time. You're able to get actually more detailed information about one person over the other. Um, and then you'll find, oh, they start to really diverge and become two different distinct people. Um, so those are a couple of little tips, a couple of little tricks that you can do um, if you find that you have, uh, you're having a hard time separating the two. Um, if you have two people and you're not sure you have two people, that's an important thing. Oh, the, the other thing I want to mention too is like, let's say it's not two people who sound the same, but you have two people that are giving you different information. Um, one of the things that you can do is really make sure that you're referring back to the main communicator who has begun uh, speaking. So let's say I have a grandma and then I start to feel a son come in. 
the best way to keep your energy with the grandma is to refer back to her. So your grandmother is telling me da 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 da, -da and she's also wanting to emphasize da 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 da. So that way you keep referring back and including that person in the conversation. So that's really helpful. And then once you know you've given everything you can get with that, then you can bring in the sun. But I'm only giving those as suggestions. Um, one of the biggest and most important key things that you do in a, in a communication is to remain flexible um, with the communication. Just follow the lead of the spirit rather than trying to control it. So do your best to just offer to them and trust that the other world uh, has the knowledge and the intelligence to be able to kind of fix these little snafus that can sometimes happen. I think sometimes as we are working with the spirit uh, and we start to move with it and then something kind of comes up, that's when we start to kind of get in our head. And we're like, oh no, this is not working or I'm not being able to place the difference here. Uh, and so what's super helpful is to just really let go of that, is that issue, that thing in your head that's telling you, oh no, something's going wrong, and just relax again back into it, and into the communication, and then let the spirit world really, really impress you in that way. So that's that would be my answer for that sort of thing. So very good question, very insightful, and hopefully um, that, that was helpful for you as well. So I really like that question. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. She says, okay, thank you. I get often when I do one-to-ones and I think separate, but then the client will say that's for grandma A and that's for grandma B. I'll keep practicing. Very good. And, and that can definitely happen because both want to come in, right? But it's when we really develop the ability to feel the power and the presence, right? We want to um, just allow ourselves to really connect with whatever that one spirit is doing. The other thing I would say too is like, Spirit tries to be as efficient as possible. If they can both get in there and both be recognized and, and all of that sort of thing, they're going to try to do that. So I definitely think that, um, you know, it's not, a ter it's not too terrible of a thing, but I do know that once we have one communicator very clearly, we're able to get much more detailed and specific information. So that can, can make it a little bit uh, trickier when you have, you're kind of not sure where you actually are uh, with which, which, which grandparents. So... Uh, Anuradha asks, how do you use spirit to work with you in psychic intuitive readings? Are they your spirit guides you refer to or which spirit is this? Good question. Um, for me, I have the belief that my spirit guides help me even when I'm working psychically. So anytime I'm moving my awareness into that other space, I believe that the other world, spirit, my guides, whatever, are coming forward to give me information. Um, sometimes the spirit will be, I, I, and when I say spirit, I use spirit like capital S spirit. So more of like a gen, well, I guess capital S would be like God. But, um, when I use spirit, I'm really referring to all of the above. So I don't actually know necessarily which guide of mine helps me with that, but I do believe that it is guides that are helping me, um, with my psychic information. I do think that I'm able by myself to pick up a certain amount of information, but when it comes to information that maybe has to do with the future or things going forward, I do think that the spirit plays a huge role in that process for me um, to get that information. So I would say, yes, it's your spirit guide. But again, a person using their own psychic insensitivity, they can just pick up an object and be able to read the energy of the object. That's a very different thing than maybe more of a predictive sort of thing um, and, and tuning in in that way. So I do feel like anytime I'm doing that kind of reading, uh, it's, it's spirit that's helping me uh, with all of it. So that's a really good question. Okay, thank you. When they are different genders, I can tell the difference. It's just when they are so similar, it gets confusing. Absolutely, Tony, I know exactly what you mean. Um, but that gets better with time, and as you get better and better, then it becomes clearer and clearer for you. So that should be, that should get easier as, as you do this. Oh, you're so welcome, Brittany. I'm glad that you're tuning in and, and you're learning. That's awesome. Uh, when pulling a tarot guide for guide, when pulling a tarot card for guidance for myself, is that guided by spirit? Good question. It's how you get the information that, or how you get that card to begin with, I think is, is key. One of the things I would recommend is if you are going to pull a card for uh, yourself, uh, I would 
take the cards, I would sit with the cards, I'd be shuffling the cards, and while I'm doing that, I'm asking my guides and helpers to help to influence the moment so that the right card for me will come forward. Um, so I'll be shuffling, and, and then I want them to impress me with a feeling when it's time to stop shuffling. So that way I know, oh, okay, this is where it is. You don't look for it, you offer the intent, but then you just wait until there's that change that happens uh, as you're feeling, you know, working with the cards. So I feel that that's a big key thing there uh, with, you know, if you want your guides to be more part of the process because they know what the cards are, they know what's going to be there. And so it's a matter of you kind of making sure that you're including them. If you're just sort of willy-nilly shuffling and going, okay, what happens? Then it might be a little bit different. I don't know. Uh, but I know for me, when it's worked the best, it's always because I've offered this time and the, this as a tool for their influence. So I think that that's a, an important thing to to take note of. So hopefully that answers your question. Yep, you're welcome for those of you who are asking. Fabulous. Um, Tony asks, do you think that all mediums work by using symbols? I've been reading about a year and a half, and I don't feel I get symbols like everyone else talks about. You know, I don't really get symbols when I work mediumistically. If I work psychically, sure, I can get symbols. Now, the spirit can work with shorthand and like impress you with something that maybe relates to your own life or something that you've experienced so that the other world, or so that they have sort of a shorthand. So like, let's say you had a loved one and their, their name was John and you have an uncle and his name is John. They might flash John to you to make you think, ah, this is John. Or if there's a certain characteristic or personality that might be similar to uh, the spirit person communicating, they may use some sort of reference of someone you know in your life. Um, I try to stay away from, I mean, I guess I don't say I try to stay away from, I just, I guess spirit doesn't really work with me with symbols, largely because when I'm working mediumistically, uh, I don't see really, I don't see very much. Uh, when I'm working psychically, however, I see a lot. That's that's how I work with it. And actually what they use with me is colors. So that's actually how I work within the aura, within the psychic sort of senses. Um, so I know some mediums say that they do. For me, if you want to be careful with, with getting too many things, symbols and things like that, only because, and that might work for some people, I just know for me, it'll encourage my mind to become present in the communication. And really what we want to do is keep our mind out of the communication. So symbols make you think, okay, what does this symbolize? We don't want to do that. So if you do get a symbol or you are using some sort of symbol, what's most important is that, um, it hits you a certain way. So how does it impact you when it hits you? If you are getting a symbol, don't try to interpret it, but just pay attention to how does this impact you? Really the key with any kind of mediumistic sort of communication or psychic sort of communication is really paying attention to the experience as a whole rather than picking one thing and saying, I need to analyze and focus on this one thing and figure out what this one thing means because that's using your mind. So you're beginning with some sort of uh, intuitive little nugget, but then you're switching into the thinking mode and that's what you don't want to do. You want to just give the information as you perceive it without any interpretation. Just go, boom, here's this, boom, here's this. Because what happens is if we start to try to interpret the information, we'll often be wrong. Uh, because it, we may think it fits in this person's life in one way, but the reality is, is that they know it in a totally different way that has much more meaning. So it's not our job to interpret, it's our job to convey and be the medium, not the interpreter. If that makes sense. Um, sorry, one more question. Do you have any books about mediumship that you recommend? I highly recommend anything that is by Gordon Smith. Basically, anything by Gordon Smith, he is fabulous. I think that he is one of the best mediums working right now, and I think that he's incredible. I also know James Bonprog has some really good books as well. Um, so I would definitely recommend anything by Gordon Smith as far as learning, because I know that that's the kind of uh, books that he generally writes, so about mediumship, how to develop mediumship, that sort of thing. Um, he has one called Intuitive Studies, which is actually what this class was first built on, the one I'm going to be teaching here soon. Um, so I don't know if it's still in print, but I think they just started reprinting it. Uh, so it's Intuitive Studies. I really like, also he has another one called um, The Unbelievable Truth. That's a really good one just about mediumship and, and, and like spirits and the other world and that sort of thing in general, which I find to be very, very interesting information for anyone who's just interested in understanding a little bit more about spirit uh, and the other world. So that's a really good one. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Anuradha asks, I also feel so exhausted after doing 
even psychic readings. I worked with two very sick old dogs and was completely wiped out. How may I protect my energy better? Okay, so one of the things you want to do is um, change your belief system. Um, number one, <laughs> just a little thing, just change your whole belief system. Um, so what you want to do with it is, hi, Baba Story and R. Ravire. Uh, <laughs> um, what you want to do is um, you really want to work with the power. So if you're using your own energy as you're working with the spirit, or, or as you're working with your, your psychic things or your mediumistic things, then you're going to start to get worn out because you're not, it's likely that you're using a lot of mental energy and, or a lot of physical energy rather than letting the flow from the other world be the thing that takes you through all of the things. So really also I would say the other thing is developing your own power and developing your energy. Um, and just being mindful of how much you uh, do with that. So something very important to just keep in mind um, with that. I may have someone walking in the door. Hold on one second. I will let you know in just a moment, and I'll come back to that question. Waiting, I'm waiting. Okay, well, um, we'll see if she tries to walk in. So, uh, yeah, so what I recommend is definitely sitting in the power to develop that sort of connection and that sort of thing. Um, what time is it anyway? Let's see. 6.47. Okay. Okay. Hold on one second. I gotta let me pull. Hi, you're okay. new for class? Yeah. Cool. I'm just finishing up a little Facebook live. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so if you don't want to be on it, I would uh, Sorry. just go into here. You can be on it if you want. Um, you can just right yeah. hang out in there, or you can have a seat here. And then uh, we, will, we will get started. Okay. So as you can see, people are coming. Um, so let me just see if there's any last little things that I can um let's see da, 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 da. hi believe in three hi sunshine rome two okay hello spirit is good I was doing da, 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 great thank you for validating that sense the color cycle too that uses the first thing that comes in thank you for the recommendations hi christine okay so since uh, my class is going to be starting here and people are starting to arrive i need to get ready for that um but thank you so much for listening again um Rewatch this. I'll, I'll end up posting the times and dates for all the different things on my events. Um, definitely come for the, the free class that's going to be on Saturday uh, on Zoom. So if you're really interested, definitely come to that. Hey, Jeanette. Hope your mom and you are doing well. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps everyone. I hope I was able to answer everything that people asked um, and just want to send you lots of love. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get to work with you or see you all very soon, okay? Thank you so much. Bye.